only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. And now, from the beautiful rolling hills and magnificent vistas from Lantau Island, please welcome the 2022-2023 Hong Kong Disneyland Resort Ambassadors, Lily Chan and Tony Dick. Hello. Oh, hello everyone. Hi everyone. It's so wonderful to be here at Walt Disney World Resorts with so many fellow Disney fans. That's right, Lily. We're so excited to be here today on the first day of Destination D23 with you all. We would like to invite you all to Hong Kong Disneyland Resorts as we will soon debut World of Frozen featuring two amazing adventures. Yes, Lily. As you all heard this morning, we're all so excited in Hong Kong and Hong Kong Disneyland because we recently announced that on November 20th, we're opening the gates of World of Frozen. And we continue to celebrate 100 years of Disney with everyone. That's so true. It's a year of so many anniversaries. It's Mickey's 95th birthday, the 50th anniversary of the classic animated feature Robin Hood, the 40th anniversary of Disney Channel, and the 30th anniversary of Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. That's true, Lily. All things to be excited about. In fact, Lily and I have traveled over 8,000 miles from Hong Kong to be here today and to celebrate with you all. And that's why the next celebration we resonate with very well. Because this corner of the world of Disney knows a little something about travel mileage. I am, of course, talking about Disney Cruise Line's Silver 25th anniversary. I mean, who doesn't love going on a beautiful Disney cruise ship all out in the oceans. To help us celebrate this wonderful milestone, please welcome a veteran of over three decades with Walt Disney Imagineering, producer Diego Paris. Well, I'm not Diego Paris. <laughs> uh, let me do it. So, my name is Pam Rollins. I'm the executive producer for Walt Disney Imagineering, and I am very excited to have you all join us today. Um, we are very excited to help Disney Cruise Line celebrate 25 years of bringing magic on the ship. So, we have images behind us. There are to your right and left. Great, great. So, to be able to begin this story, we have to go back to the original design. And our Imagineers were challenged with an out-of-tradition tradition. In fact, it became our overall goal. And as we embarked in that voyage, it, we took us to the romance and grandeur of the floating palaces of yesteryear, the famous luxury liners that crossed the North Atlantic on the first half of the 20th century. And as you can see on this slide, here are some of our initial ideas for the designs of our ships that more focused on incorporating Disney into the overall ships. Clearly, it was more difficult than we thought. I really like that top right-hand corner. Not sure how that would pull that off. At the time of the mid-1990s, Michael Eisner was the chief executive officer of the Walt Disney Company. And he had fond memories as sitting as a little boy watching his grandparents set sail on the Queen Mary for Europe. This was the initial seed of where our inspirations would come from. Later, Michael was aboard the Mauritania for her final voyage. He remembered this this was an enormous amount of fun. Those images of classic ships stayed with Michael throughout the project. He said, it is the romance I feel that our guests are seeking. And with those words, we had clear direction on where we would eventually land with our designs. Also, you remember, Walt Disney loved to lifelong fascination of travel and the adventure of seas. He played a pirate game as a boy and later crossed the Atlantic to serve as an ambulance driver in France during World War I. 
He and his wife Lillian and their family throughout the lifetime together enjoyed vacations of ocean liners. And that was very apparent in our early short films, including Alice's Day at Sea in 1924. Of course, our groundbreaking first sound cartoon of Steamboat Willie in 1928, just to name a few of those inspirations that came from those travels. So now we're getting a little closer. Our second round of our design competition, you can see those guiding design principles take shape, but we're not there yet. As we continue to hone in and all the details that we show up you, show here on these screens, the classic black hull, or as we know it in Imagineering, Monica Blue, but I'll tell you that story later, started to take shape. And you can see some of the design details that we took from the inspiration of Mickey Mouse. In fact, those lifeboats that are yellow, we had to get special permission from the Coast Guard to use that color to change what traditionally is a different color. So this is all now taking shape. Our classic line, classic feature lines of fleets only require one modern ship. Two funnels are typical, and so we wanted that classic look to add those two funnels. So what do we do with that? It gave us great inspiration of all the things that we could do within that space. Other design details are the sculpted hull with the classic curves, the ranking yellow string line from the bow of the ship to the stern, all gave us that modern classic look, a sleek and elegance that sets us apart from all the other ships on the high seas. And ultimately, we arrived on our final design of the Disney Magic. These original design principles have continued to guide us on every ship since then. And after 25 years sailing on the high seas, we continue to, we continue to set ourselves apart even before you arrive to your ports of call. The truly overall experience you're about to undertake is even before you set on the ship. Disney Cruise Line also revolutionized the cruise industry. We designed our ships with families in mind. We have wonderful theater, Broadway-style theater in the Walt Disney Theater. We bring water attractions to sea with the Aqua Mouse and the Aqua Duck. We have fireworks at sea, and we have our own private island castaway key. All these set us aside. Whoa, I forgot one more. Rotational dining, which all started with Animator's Palette. Yeah. What I also love about our Disney ships is the unique personalities, and we do this in so many different ways, and often not noticeable to our guests, and these surprise and delights is what makes this being a part of these design teams so special. So from the filigree that greets you once onto the ship into our beautiful, majestic atriums of the magic, the wonder, and the fantasy to our newest grand halls, the Disney Wish and Disney Treasure. These spaces not only welcome you and your family, but this is where we start to create those fantastical stories that you will begin on your journey of that vacation. It's all about creating memories for you and your family and your friends. What also is a spe special unique trait is our Disney characters that adorn each of our atriums and Grand Hall. They also bring a special magic to these places and they embody everything we do about placemaking and storytelling on the Disney ships. So, as we land today, where this magic meets the sea and celebrating our 25 years, I want to bring up to you a panel of our designers that have been part of our journey for building the Disney Cruise Line. I'm going to start, let's see. So starting with our panel, Pete Leathers, Senior Show Manager. Jason Roberts, Senior Creative Producer. Jay Abruzzi's, Principal Show Production Designer. Alexis Cummins, Principal Graphic Designer. Diego Paras, 
who was announced earlier. Not only is our producer, but also our moderator today. Hi, Diego. <laughs> Philip Janot, our project management executive for the portfolio for Disney Cruise Line. And Kristen Ziegler, principal set decorator. Hi, Diego. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta love it. Well, thank you so much for having us out here. Um, and I wanted to thank everybody on the panelists for being here. One of the things that we really wanted to do is to try to get into the overall design of how we design ships, and we couldn't have the most amazing uh, disciplines right here. So we were gonna just kinda like jump right into it, because we don't have that much time. I'm looking for the clock where it is. There's, uh, so Philip, we're gonna- Plenty of time. I know. Um, <laughs> right, Philip, we're, go we're gonna go ahead and start with you, Philip, because, uh, and this is kind of a little bit of a open-ended question here, but, where do we start, right? You, you kind of like have a lot of development that basically happens with the ships, but at the end of the day, you're really responsible for cutting that first piece of steel and really start that, what we know of the construction of the actual ship. So kind of give us a little bit of a background to what it takes to get to that day for us to do that. Uh, how much time did we have? <laughs> we, we don't have that much time, so. Like you said, it, it is something very unique, very, very complex, and we could talk about this for hours, how to do this. But there is one thing that I think is worth mentioning when a cruise ship is being built, you do go through all of these desi design engineering, etc. you cut steel, but then for a, a, such a complex product to be built, you do build it in a very lean way. And one of the ways is actually building it in so-called blocks. Mm. So it really, when you, when you slice it up in pieces and then build each block at a time and then put it together, that's really uh, one of the key moments, uh, how, how you really manage to do a, a complex thing like that. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about the facility. I still remember the first time that I was there, and it's just absolutely massive. You would think that we would actually, you're building a cruise ship, right? You've been near the ocean, but we're actually roughly, I think, 100 miles inland. And then I remember the first time that we uh, just drove up to, it, it's just massive. My understanding is that if you were to stand one of our ships straight up, is a little bit longer than the Empire State Building, and within the main building, you can actually put one and a half ships, and you can actually fly a 747 through that building, so pretty amazing, and a lot of those blocks are actually built in that, in that building. It's, it's really very special. Um, the shipyard we chose to build our Disney Wish and our Disney Treasure and the ship after that, they are really, really awesome. They are the best partners you can think of, but one of the key things that's so special about them is they build our ships indoors mm. it's this huge hall and um, by building it inside of course you can imagine the quality and everything and it's just so much easier you're not dependent on the weather not the wind or whatever and that's really the key isn't it so they're building all of these blocks inside they put all the blocks into a dock inside the hall complete the entire ship and then of course you've got those great moments where the ship finally floats out of the hall and you've got that main reveal so a lot of things going there yeah, and um, one of the things, it was really kind of hard for a lot of, because you, you can imagine there's so many different teams that actually work on, on the ships. And one of the things that Philip did, he actually built this model out of wood that contained every single one of those blocks for people to be able on the project team to understand how they actually get placed at specific times. Um, we're going to go ahead and open it up a little bit more on the creative side. Um, so anybody can just kind of like jump in. But how do we start thinking about, I don't want to say the spaces, but the stories that we want to, um, tell in these spaces. Any thoughts behind that? Well, I'll, I like to start first. I think what's really unique about the Disney Cruise Line is we have the ability to unlock this treasure chest of stories. Um, you know, we're not, it's not a place setting or it's a time and place. We can unlock so many stories, what we call our Disney, tre Disney treasure chest, and, and, and include those in every from bow to stern in all the spaces and it can be in a very sophisticated level where it's just inspired or we can totally immerse our guests such as learning animations uh, magic learning how to draw and then seeing your drawings up on board so I think that's what's exciting about and different than we can do in some of the other um, theme parks and resorts. Do all of those stories kind of like tee up of the overall motif of what that ship they represents? They do. They're or? all tied into the motif. That's really where we start first. Um, and it also um, is explained by the character we might uh, decide that's in the Grand Hall or even our stern characters. They're all tied in to a story. Yeah. Um, going back to kind of like the construction, and again, everybody can just jump in. Um, Everybody's pretty much worked on multiple different projects throughout the years for Walt Disney Imagineering. What's the difference between building something that's land-based than building something that is going to actually float on the ocean? 
Any thoughts behind that? Yeah, yeah I think uh, for me coming into it and, and viewing this, the as, as Philip was saying, the scale, the scope and scale of these ships is it's unbelievable. The first time I took a look at that ship, I was like, wow, that's crazy. But it's not, I mean, it's it's a hotel, it's a theme park, it's it's restaurants, it's theaters, it's all of this into this big vessel that's, you know, an ocean-going vessel that sails around the world in all these different places. And we off, you know, we have to condense all that, not really condense, but uh, distill it, if you will, into, into this big thing. And Philip talking about the blocks, what was incredible to me was that you might have blocks of the ship that are like practically ready to go. You might have a stateroom that's like you could stay in it already. And yet there's other parts of the ship that we're just getting started on. So being, seeing that, seeing that how different the timelines can be and, and again the scale, to me that is what, probably the biggest difference uh, from a land-based project. I think too, just from a personal standpoint, many people may not know this, but we live on the ships, really for an extended period of time. And so I think that's an adventure of working on Disney Cruise Line. Um, it's something that makes it very different, right, than a land-based theme park project, is we are very, very close to our work. Um, and so, yeah, whether that's during a dry dock, which we might talk about later, um, for some of our current ships or a brand new ship, um, it's a super fun opportunity to live and work kind yeah, of the same uh, uh, Continuing on that, can you kind of like touch base on all the different disciplines? Of, of teams that need to come together, whether it's the shipyard and Disney Cruise Line and Walt Disney Imagineering. Talk a little bit about what that, relate, you know, that partnership is like. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say that, honestly, it's a really, it's this diverse kind of international experience. Um, we work with the shipyard teams. Um, of course, you know, we have all of our partners that we work with. Um, we work with our crew members from all around the world who really bring our spaces to life. And so that's a really special um, part of being involved in Disney Cruise Line is just all the different people from all over the world that really help to bring these stories to life. Yeah. It's really important to, to try and grasp that we're trying to include every type of technology, every type of design, or every kind of work that needs to be done is all combined together. And we're working with truly the best teams in the world. Yeah. We have an incredible partner with the shipyard. We are working with many, many vendors that are coming from all over the world to do very specialized things. We're working with an incredible cruise line. I mean, they really know their product. They help us to bring that ship to life. But then within Imagineering itself, we cover all of the various uh, disciplines that you have because everything is included. I mean, you said it really well. Yeah, the ship is like a hotel, but yeah, she doesn't only float, she actually sails somewhere. And that hotel, while well, the crew lives on board, right? They don't go home at the end of the day. And we have a main grand uh, th theater in there. We have a, a grand hall in there. We have pools, we've got a spa. Everything is included in that ship. So you need to think of all the various people that you need to actually pull that off. Let's get into some of those specifics. And Alexis, I'm going to be looking at you. Uh, Alexis, she's our graphics extraordinaire. Uh, she's worked on, on so many um, different projects, land-based. But how does the cruise portfolio and the way that we um, design and build uh, graphics differ from anything else that we've done? So what's really interesting about Disney Cruise Line and designing for Disney Cruise Line is the scale. I know we touched on that earlier, but I, as a graphic designer, sometimes interface with things that are much larger than life. I mean, we're working on logos that end up on the back of a ship, and we're work working and thinking about those details all the way down to, you know, what the place settings look like and what the menus look like and all of these different things that guests are able to interact with more closely over the series of a few days. Um, so what I think is also great is being able to incorporate those details that people may not get on their first visit, but they will definitely get through the course of a cruise or if, as a repeat guest. And those are things that I think surprise and delight um, from a design perspective, too. So on a specific, let's, a, 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 any of the ships, right? How many, of, how many, can you throw a number out there? Like how many different pieces can you actually work throughout the lifespan of that project? Oh, wow. It's a lot. Um, we... <laughs> We have thousands of graphics that we work on. Um, I think the last I checked, it was in the 40,000 range of produced pieces. So when we talk about scope and scale, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of different pieces. And I also think what's interesting is design interfaces beyond from what we might think of as a traditional graphic design. So it's not just menus and printed collateral. It extends into things like 
our stateroom blankets or within our cinemas, we're talking about lighting and, and graphics that go on the walls that are actually embroidered. So it's a lot of different things that you might not necessarily get on that first read, but that's, that's what we get to do and it's lots of fun. And it shows because they're absolutely beautiful throughout the entire ship. Uh, Kristen, talking a little bit about Kristen, she's our prop master. Uh, <laughs> talk to us about props. How do props um, immerse guests into the stories within that environment that you're having them walk into? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say echoing kind of what Pam said earlier, what I love about Disney Cruise Line is we get to work with a multitude of stories all kind of within this one giant ship. Um, and so really, I love that, yeah, we have the opportunity. We're kind of like, you know, a little cherry on top or a sprinkling of magic after you build this gigantic ship. And so, yeah, I love that about it. And there's a lot of logistics, honestly, that go behind just bringing even the smallest prop on board. Um, so I'll use, you know, our most recent ship as an example, the Disney Wish. Um, in 1923, if any of you have dined there, um, it's a beautiful celebration um, of Disney animation. There are over a thousand props just in that one restaurant let alone the entire ship. Um, and there's just attention to detail in every piece. Um, it was funny, I was talking to um, one of our amazing Disney animators just yesterday, and they were commenting on a piece um, in our Bambi case, and it's this kind of articulated skeletal model of Bambi that was actually used as inspiration um, in the making of the animated film. And they first told me, they said, how did you get that? There's only one of those that exists. And it's like, and I'm like, oh no, like, we got research photos from the animation research library, made it, but like even a Disney animator goes, wow, like the attention to detail just in that one piece in a restaurant where there's a thousand props. That's what we really strive to do. Um, it's attention to detail and yeah, bringing Disney magic no matter what storyline we're working on. Yeah, and just to kind of talk about this one here, because it was actually really special for the team, but that little wood model that Philip actually came up with to teach us all about how these blocks are basically built to build this ship, uh, we ended up, well, Kristen, you and Philip can tell the story of how we had this little celebration at the very end. Go ahead, take it. Philip, go for it. It's your baby. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a special moment. We, we, we thought of this model as an educational model for the team mainly as well to try and explain what's coming, how it's going to happen, what block is going to go next, etc. And as it happened in the pandemic, we all remember, right, we did have to work from home quite a bit. We actually used the model nonstop, virtually, ready to show everyone to, to you know, share it with everyone but then at one point in time one of the team members comes to me and said philip um, can we have that model went, Whoa, i wasn't ready for that one um i did spend quite a few hours like in my hobby room um, but then i said why not it's had its use um we we've used it so many times now so it made it into the grand hall and it was a great moment chris and i thank you so much for that it was a really special moment so it's there so if you go and see it you might find it um the model, yep, it's ours, right? Yeah. yeah, so anybody that sells, as soon as you go into the Grand Hall, if you go to the left-hand side right there, the model's actually right there. We had to pry it out of his hands. So. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, paint. Um, it's something that you would never really kind of like think of, right, when you're looking at a, a cruise ship. Uh, all I remember through all these years is just seeing you running around and painting this and painting that. Tell us a little bit about how that helps us tell the story in the overall, overall experience. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very fortunate. I probably have the best job of anybody, I, you know, a little bit biased, obviously, but I get to make everything look pretty at the end of the day. So, um, you know, you'll find me sometimes on the back of the stern, hanging off the back of the ship, working on one of the characters there. You'll find me in the uh, the kids' spaces, working uh, in in our in our uh, our spaces there with our partners. That's you know, to me, that's the best part about it. It's the partnership that I get to work with, not only with like graphics and props. I work with them every day as well when it comes to uh, uh, IP type things. But then I get to reach out with our Pixar partners, our Marvel partners, our Star Wars partners. So, that's that's the best part about it. Yeah. And it's one of those, just the countless level of detail of sitting there for hours and hours. One of, the, one of the fortunate things that I've been able to do is capture a lot of the things of, of building the ships and just how many hours you would just sit there and try to film and having the discussion of placement of like the eyes and what it's looking at. It's really, it's really amazing work that, that you get to do. Uh, with all of this, right, I mean, the ships, they do have to go into dry docks every couple of years. Uh, so Pete, I know that you get to work a lot, about, a lot about that. Can you tell us what the dry docks are like and what, the th what we get to do? Yeah, so uh, it's really interesting because every couple of years we get the chance to update the ships. 
And so sometimes it's uh, leveling the top deck and putting in a new water slide or a new the aqua lab on, on the magic. And then other times we've uh, removed the kids area in Oceaneers Club and completely replaced it with new Toy Story room and Marvel room. And it's, it's really cool. And we have so many different teams that are working on this between show set, special effects, graphics, props, paint. I mean, it's, it's a, an army of people. And when we go to dry dock, I mean, it's scheduled down to the hour. You know, you work 24 hours a day. Sometimes it's only a two-week dry dock, and you have to completely remove what's there before and then install everything in just a couple of weeks. So like Kristen was saying, when you uh, are doing a dry dock, you live on the ship. So you're there, uh, you know, all night, all, <laughs> all day long working in these areas. It's, and, and it's we pretty also, amazing. I was going to say, Philip, anything from, your, from a technical standpoint? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you, you always make it sound so easy, right? Oh, yeah, we're just going to dry dock, and we'll just put a new slide on there, a new space. Um, a cruise ship sails 365 days a year, nonstop. You know, the ship never, you never turn it off. It's a living thing. But, of course, after a few years, you do need to go into a dry dock, meaning you go into a dock, you drain the water, so you, she's sitting dry out of the water, so you can actually go underneath as well. You can look at the propellers, the thrusters, um, the rudders, just to make sure everything is okay, because you can't do that in port. You can do a lot of things on a cruise ship, but not that. So every so often you go in, and you know, okay, we need to go in there, we need at least a week to do some repairs or maintenance things, but then during that week, we're like, right, we're ripping out this thing, uh, replacing it, and new IP in there, but it, it is the most stressful uh, thing that happens, yeah, it's, right? It's yeah. very challenging, but, you know, we got a lot of really smart people that work on the team that really uh, surgically schedule how this is all going to work. So, you know, it takes years of planning to, to get these uh, installed, but it's, it's pretty exciting. It's like two years of planning and 10 days to make it work. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Right so, because she needs to sail again, right? I mean, yeah. at the end, she needs to go out there, and, and, then, and there's and maybe some of you have already booked pick, the, yeah. this cruise, and you were waiting for the ship, so yeah. So how do you balance that overall relationship between, you know, the creative and everything that you're coming up with of what these spaces are going to look like, but at the same time, from the technical side, because these things actually have to physically happen on the ship, what is that coordination of that or that partnership like? The, the, well, you should see the schedules. It, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, everyone is, you know, as soon as we demo an area to get ready to put something new in, we're, we're right there. We're ready, and we do a lot of staging um, beforehand. I mean, not only just the mock-ups that we do to go approve things and materials, but the staging of it. So it's all ready to go as soon as that room is ready, and then there's inspections and completion. And then... Jay comes back in <laughs> and then Makes ties it, it all into us, or Kristen comes in to add the last special props. It's, it is uh, it, the coordination and, and the partnership with Disney Cruise Line um, together with the creative team and with the, the production team is we, we have to be there. We sit at tables and we go through, like, I think it's twice, once in the morning and once in the evening. Mm -hmm. Um, and we go through each of the spaces and say what our concerns are, what the risks are, but we make it happen. So with all this being said, what do you think really sets Disney Cruise Line apart? I, I think it's the attention to detail. So I, I think, you know, uh, Jay mentioned like a, a Star Wars room. I think all the people that are working on that are so passionate and they get all the details right. You know, so when you walk into that space, it, it feels right. And, and I think that, that attention to detail is really what makes a difference. And there is actually one detail in here. I don't know if you want to talk about it. Which yeah, he should. Works. Oh, we're going to tell the story? Are we allowed to tell the story? <laughs> uh, They're you, not taking notes. Not taking notes? Okay. Um, yeah, so where do I start with this? So <laughs> this is really the attention to detail that everybody goes into. Yeah, we were, uh, it was late one night. We were uh, finishing up on the Wish, and we're uh, working in the, the cargo bay of the kids' space. And in that, there's an interactive game that children can play when they're there. And there's porgs, and the porgs fly around the room, and we have our animatronic porg, which is... He's gorgeous. He looks great. And I said, well, you know, birds fly around. Birds poop, right? Like, can we, wouldn't there be poop everywhere in this room? You know, it should be gross. And uh, so everyone, we, we kind of laughed about it. And so I was like, started thinking more about it. So I go back to my room. I put the films on. I start looking through them, looking for reference. I can't, can't find anything about pork poop. It doesn't exist. <laughs> so we get on the horn. We call our, uh, our partners at Star Wars and Lucas. And they say, 
we've never thought about it either. Go for it. Make it. So we put Porg Poop in the Star Wars room, and I got to do something with canon. So Your yeah. inspiration? What bird was your inspiration? Uh, we just went with the penguins, the typical <laughs> penguins, yeah. You know, we looked at a lot of reference, and uh, yeah. My daughter will love that I told this story because she gets a kick out of it. So, <laughs> so let, let's talk about let, the details. Is there any details on any of the ships, right, that you really kind of, that you, that you love? You start on from the exterior. I'm sure many of you have seen our ships or you've seen the photos now as well. It doesn't take long for you to immediately recognize the ships. The, the, whether it's the colors, whether it's the curves, whether it's the funnels, the, the, the sleek look of the ship. Um, we do go that extra mile, and that's what's important, right? So we even put in curved parts of the ship where it's not really necessary. Most people probably would never realize it. And the shipyard goes, oh, really? Another curved piece of steel? Oh. But no, no, that's what we do. But then they actually realize, even the shipyard workers, right, they're so proud at the end of the, when, when the ship comes out, they're all standing there, wow. Yeah. They, we have yard workers coming up to us and say, please, can we work on this ship? You know, they're working on this other ship at the moment. And I think that's special, isn't it? So it starts with just the looks. The ships are absolutely gorgeous. And I, that's not just me. I think we, we all agree, right? Yeah, and it really is. I mean, that overall look, I don't know how everybody feels about it, but in, in a corny way, one of the things, whenever I, I'm driving out to the coast and you see the water for the first time and you're going over the, the, the overpasses and the first thing that you're doing, you're actually, you're looking and it's like, where, is she, where, where are the ships? And I mean, just, just having that feeling that really sets everything uh, apart. Um, let's get into a little bit about working, because you mentioned some of our partners, right? So what's it like to, to be able to work with our partners at the studio, at Pixar, at Lucasfilm? Who's going to talk? You want me to talk? Okay. <laughs> well, well um, yeah, right. We do talk, uh, deal with all, all these partners, and they're great partners, and they love to see us uh, interpret their stories on our ships, too. So we, we start talking with them. At the, from the very beginning, we want to get them on board with it, and, uh, and we meet with them, oh, gosh, weekly uh, almost. And uh, we, we seek their input. We want to get it right, too, and, uh, and they want to help us get it right. And all these folks up here who are, again, so into the details. I mean, it's, it's fun working with them and doing all the research. I mean, I, we've all watched the movies time and time again just to get those details. But it's a great partnership, and, uh, and we love the opportunity to tell those stories all across the fleet. Well, no, I, I was just say I, that's one of my favorite parts is collaborating with Pixar and the Walt Disney Animation Studios, and um, and then sometimes we and even you know we introduce something new to them each and every time. I mean, everyone heard today, you know, the Disney Adventure that's coming out. I mean, and we've been able to work with them very closely and to understand that region and the stories that we can tell that really have not been introduced to the Southeast um, Asian. And I just. It's a region that I think it's untapped for us, and anime, um, Pixar and Walt Disney Animation and Lucasfilms is just so excited to be part of this journey with us. They, it's just it's a really great feeling, and they take a lot of pride in it too. When she, when the ships launch, they get just as, you know, teary eyed. I think the story we talk about, she, um, Kristen talked about 1923, and we always said this was our love letter to the animators, and you know she talked to some of them last night, and we've been able to bring them on the ships, and they they just. I don't know, they just fall in love with it. So. Yeah. Oh, um, so uh, what I was thinking of is they're great collaborators. I love and then look forward to a lot of those meetings that we have on an ongoing basis because oftentimes when we all collaborate together, we come up with you know really great ideas, better ideas, I think, than when we work independently often. And um, one of my favorite, going back to one of my favorite details, one of my favorite details is um, those, uh, the stateroom corridors have these wonderful light fixtures that we created that are custom. And in working with our partners at Animation Studio, we got to be able to do that custom work and really, again, like down to the tiniest detail, we're able to incorporate something like that on something that could have just been a simple light, but we went back and added that really Disney difference to it. Yeah. At the end of the day, right, everything that we get to work on and all the hard work is, is for all of our guests uh, that are going to board any of our ships through the atriums or going through our, our grand halls. What are you really hoping that they take away from the experience? Well, I have, I always, this is something I always say, it's, it's not, I don't have a particular thing, and I, this was the same feeling I always had when I was doing land-based projects, 
but is knowing that our guests are creating these memories with their friends and family, I said it earlier, um, and then I see it on Facebook or social media, and I'm like, oh, cool, I know all about that. And I just, I think that's really special, and it's, it's heartwarming to me that guests want to come and see what I've designed, not, well, the team's design and, and a part of, and I think that's, it's just like when the rope drops at the Magic Kingdom on a new attraction for us, it's that when they embark into the Grand Hall or the atrium, um, they're starting to make memories and they keep those for a lifetime. I'd also add, like I said, even when you start with the yard workers, our own teams of people, our crew, but our guests as well, it's emotions. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own story, and everyone's going to do that cruise with a different background. And maybe it's celebrating something, maybe it's doing it again because it was so great. But it is the emotions. I even feel it myself. When, when I do go over the overpass and I see the ship again, oh, yeah, there she is. Isn't she gorgeous? It's emotions, isn't it? And, and that's what we all like. And, and I actually believe that's one of the key things that somehow we're always trying to do. Whatever we do, we'll try to create those emotions for all of our guests, for everyone who works on it, lives on it, sails on it, and has a vacation or whatever. That's really what we're trying to do. Anyone else? And yeah. I think it's just really gratifying, too. Like, you, you work on the Disney Wish for six years, and you put your heart and soul into it. And to be able to share it with your family or your friends, it's really gratifying seeing your, your friends and family enjoying what you've worked so hard on, too. Yeah, and being able to be on board sometimes with our guests and hearing the comments that they make when they experience something, there's nothing like that. That's really gratifying. I know just a personal story. So in third grade... <laughs> I received a package in the mail, and it was the original Disney Cruise Line vacation planning VHS. <laughs> yes, I still have the song memorized, but I will not perform it for you this morning. Um, but little did I know, my grandparents had actually planted this in the mail and sent it to me. Um, and me and my brother were ecstatic. We watched this movie weekly, and I'm like, I want to go on that. I want to go on this Disney ship. It's amazing, the magic at the time. I and mean, again, little did I know, my grandparents planted it so they could take us on a Disney cruise in third grade. And the, the theme of this trip was, this is a once-in-a-lifetime vacation, guys. This is an amazing once-in-a-lifetime vacation. And I remember my family repeating that. And now it's so amazing and rewarding and what a responsibility to stand back and go, this thing that I said was a once in a lifetime vacation is now what I get to do for a job. Yeah. And now I have the responsibility to transfer that magic to the next third grade Kristen who's, you know, watching this thing go, wow, you know, I want to go on that Disney cruise ship. So I think that's what it means to me to work on Disney Cruise Line. Um, just a super, super special experience and responsibility. Oh, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. And to that, I was going to say, and we can just kind of like go down the line, but personally, how does it make you feel like being able to be on this um, cruise line portfolio? Because uh, I know all of you have been working on it for many, many years. How, how does it personally make you feel that you're a part of that? Like for me, I mean, it's, it's amazing, right? I mean, I was just this dorky little geeky Star Wars fan who used to draw comic books as a kid in Pennsylvania growing up. And then here I get to hang off the back of ships and paint these amazing stern figures and things like that. So, um, you know, for me, it's very emotional as well. Just like everyone, we get very passionate about our job and it, there, there's stressful days and it's crazy, but you know, it comes down to your family, right? I mean, it's all about this work family is amazing. They support us all. We do great work with each other. And then I have an amazing supporting family at home that takes care of everything. And then we go on the ships and we see the families enjoying it, right? We see them just having that same kind of passion that we have that we bring to building it and they get to experience it when it's all finished and so I love that part and I love that my whole family gets to grow up with this cruise ship from you know from the dream and the magic all the way up to here to where we're at now yeah I sailed on the magic uh, 25 years ago for the first time first cruise ever and I wasn't even sure I was gonna like a cruise and and the, from the moment I was on there I loved it I, I thought this is this is incredible and not just not just the food and the service and the shows and all that, just the whole end-to-end -end experience for me was just like, I, I love this. And so now my kids are huge fans, huge fans. And to be able to work on this portfolio and do something that I know they're excited about and that, that they can't wait to do, uh, you know, it's, for me, that's, that's really, really special to be a part of that. Being a fan, being a dad who gets to take his kids on it, that's pretty cool. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I kind of echo exactly what you guys said. It's, it was so exciting the first cruise I went on, and then to be a part of the team that helps to build them is really rewarding. 
Um, and it's exciting to like see the evolution of, of um, like animators palette and where it was 25 years ago, but then 10 years later there's an upgrade and, and seeing the new images and the new experience is, is just really rewarding. And for me, um, I was born and raised in Florida, so I was a huge fan and came to the parks with my family and made those memories at Walt Disney World. So working on Cruise Line was actually completely new and different, and what I think is great about that is I'm experiencing those Disney stories in a completely new and different way. So while I have nostalgia for something like the theme parks, this is completely different and new and exciting for me as somebody's working on it, but also getting to enjoy it and creating those memories. There's two things. I still today get excited after many, many, many years working with or on cruise ships or whatever. Every time when I see one of our ships, it's exciting. But I think one of the things that I, all of it, what you said, exactly, I feel that, but also humbleness. Mm -hmm. It's really humbling to be able to work on something special like this. It is really, really unusual. But in working with the most incredible people and I mean, it's humbling to sit here, right? Re re we are representing an entire team of just geniuses, really. I mean, but it's, it's all putting it together. It's that getting it all together, that complexity, the coordination of everything, it's actually a, quite a humbling experience. And then also at the end, see it come to life, see the crew bring the ship to life as one going, wow, we did that? Oof, how did that happen? It's, it's really quite a humbling experience. I, I just... Uh you know, I've been with the company for 30 years, and uh, the opportunity to come work on Disney Cruise Line portfolio about seven years ago, and I thought this just adds another chapter in my Disney careers and another story for me to tell and be a part of. So it's amazing, and my family is just very supportive as well. So, yes, I don't know. Well, thank you so another much memory. for... I'm sorry. Thank you for being able to share all of that. I see the clock is flashing at us saying that we're over time but thank you thank you so much for uh for taking part of this session it really really means a lot to us to be able to be a part of this team but most of all to have all of you to be able to uh to hear these stories we do have one little clip that we're going to show as we exit but uh here's here's one of the plugs we were able to actually work on a national geographic one hour special on the building of the disney wish that really touches on all of those things that were discussed on this panel so if you do have a chance uh, to go on Disney Plus and Nat Geo to watch that show. It's really, really uh, pretty amazing. So thank you so much for, uh, for having us here today. Thank you. Thank you.
and hear you may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration 